Welcome to another episode of Big Risk Energy. I'm your host, Roy Samuel. I'm a serial entrepreneur, having founded multiple businesses, including one that I scaled and sold to a gaming company in 2018. I've been an investor for the last five years, and I'm super passionate about mental health and neurodiversity, suffering with severe ADHD and dyslexia myself. On this podcast, we talk to an amazing range of people, from actors to academics, investors to entrepreneurs, politicians, musicians, scientists, and everyone in between. And we talk to these people about risk. Risk they've taken in their lives, risk they've taken in their careers, when they paid off and when they didn't. And on today's show, I am blessed to be joined by the one and only Josh White. Thank you, Ryan. Josh is the co-founder and marketing director of Cano Water, was recently included in Forbes 30 Under 30, and like me, is super passionate about mental health and making positive changes in the world. Josh, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. So I want to get right into it. So we were in Miami recently. We were. I had to drop that in, <laughs> Johnny. It's a good start, right? So we're in Miami recently. And you said something to me very, very interesting, which is at multiple times in your life, you could have gone a very easy route. You know, you could have gone into property, you could have gone into recruitment, lots of opportunities there for you, which would have been steady. They'd have been the safe thing to do. Yeah. But you're not wired like that and you wanted to take risks. So where does that all come from? I've been like that my whole life, to be honest with you, since literally as far as I can remember, I've always been different. I've never been the same. If someone went there, I would go there. Um, I've always been very sort of interested in what this tells me. Mm. So what my mind tells me rather than what everyone else is doing. And it's just been something that's sort of, and I don't, I don't know where it, it's come from, but it's something that's just been ingrained in, in, in my soul. And uh, I, I think that one of the main things you talk about ADHD, mm. that's definitely something that I think is a, it's a positive and a negative of my ADHD. Because as a kid, I found it extremely difficult to stick to, to one thing. No, I was I always, it. you know, going from <laughs> art to music, to skateboarding, to graffiti, to this, to that. And I just, I, if I wanted to be an artist, I would, I would, do, I would try it for like a year and mm. then I'd be on to like trying to be a musician and then I'd be here and then there. I never really knew, I never could stick to anything. So I think that was the negative side, but the positive side was I knew that I yearned for something different. Mm. I, I knew that I had to do something that excited me rather than something that just, you know, just sitting in an office every day, not having a purpose and purpose yeah. is, for me, purpose is, is, the, is the number one. And that's where, you know, I left school and became a DJ when everyone else became, as you said, like estate property, agent. recruitment, is that exactly. And um, I definitely, definitely felt like, is this the right decision? Is this the right decision? But my mind was always like, but this is what you love. Mm. You're obsessed with music. You're mm. obsessed with making people go mad at an event. And uh, that was like the first big decision that I sort of had where it was sort of like, who cares what people think? I'm mm. going to do what I love. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's a really, really interesting point and something I, I can really relate to as well in terms of when you are young, it's with ADHD and, and a lot of people don't understand this. It's this constant feeling of like, oh, I can't feel a balance. I can't feel rest. Yeah, yeah. So it's like constantly looking around like, what's the thing that's yeah. going to make me feel like, I mean, satisfied? Balance right? is like, that's the word. Yeah. For me, it's like, how do I, and, and I've actually, I wouldn't say I've cracked it, mm. but balance is definitely something that I've struggled with mm. my whole life. But I definitely, ha definitely have like a structure now where I have to stick to that structure yeah. because if I veer outside of it, my whole world <laughs> collapses. Yeah, so totally. balance is like, is super important um, for me, especially when it comes to balance between business and mental health and gym and all these types of things that, because if I, if, I, if I hone in on business, mm. something else mm. falls. So, how are you with holidays then? Because I, because I recently had this conversation with my therapist actually, yeah, yeah. because I always felt very, very guilty about not being able to switch off yeah. and guilty for different reasons. One, because you see a lot of content out there around, you know, you need to have work-life balance yeah, yeah. to protect your mental health. And for some people they do, but for the ADHD brain, for me, balance looks like 
going a million miles, miles an hour. Yeah. If I'm stopping down, if I'm yeah, stopping, yeah. if I'm slowing down, I feel out of balance. For sure. So how do you deal with that side? I, of I'm, I'm exactly the same. I think where I've been fortunate is, um, you know, when I was younger, um, I learned a lot about myself and I, and I think that that was massively important. You know, I, uh, I went through quite a lot of it as a kid, especially, you know, we, we've spoken about it before. I don't drink. I had a little bit of an alcohol problem when I was younger. And I'm very fortunate to be part of, you know, a program where you work on yourself. And um, whether it be seeing a therapist or going to, you know, an AA meeting or whatever it is, I found it incredibly important to learn about what I need mm. and I've, I've burnt out so many times in life you know when I was 19 years old uh, even, even before that even DJing all mm. over the country driving to Leeds and Nottingham Birmingham I remember high frequency you know, I remember exactly the <laughs> and, and, and the high frequency days which was an events company that I set up um, with a friend that basically I, I, used to, I used to stand outside of clubs at three, four in the morning and hand out flies to people. And then I'd wake up at like seven, eight in the morning and I would just be burning myself out. out. And, and sometimes I'd get literally like two and a half, three hours sleep. And after a year or two of it, I, I saw this. Uh, I, was, I was just, I was actually broken. I mm. actually physically just, it, how even did you thinking realize, about it now. How did you realize? What was it that made you realize like, shit, I'm burnt out? I think that... I got to the age of 22, um, it was just before Can of Water, mm. I was really, really unhappy. And uh, I was actually speaking about it um, recently about how, what, like, how important being happy is. Mm. You know, like take away all the materialistic things in life, like what makes you happy? Mm. I wasn't happy. Like I enjoyed DJing, I love DJing, but it got to a point where I wasn't doing what I, what I loved. I was actually just... I became a bit of a robot and I was just driving back and forth and DJ and I wasn't really doing anything that I, that I, I really loved and I actually lost, lost touch and lost yeah. the love because I'm obsessed with music. Yeah. Music is my, is, you know, is, is my, is my, my thing. Yeah. And um, I just was getting ill, you know, I was eating unhealthy. I'd never gone to the gym. Um, I was mentally... Unhealthy. It's an unhealthy lifestyle. And, that, and for I sure. think I got, you know, I got to the point where I think I broke down at like 22 years old. I just, mm. I just can't do this anymore. Mm. And I got mad anxiety and I was just really like mentally unstable in my, in my mind of like, what am I going to do? Everyone else is doing this. I'm a DJ. Is this, this isn't going to last forever. Yeah. Probably the first, probably my first experience of serious imposter syndrome. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, ba I basically just, I started to get really healthy. It's it really funny, actually. I stopped eating loads of McDonald's. I stopped drinking loads of Red Bull. I substituted that with water, mm -hmm. funny enough. And, and I started to just become really, uh, I started to just concentrate on myself. Mm. Started to speak to people, started to be open and honest. And I think within about six to eight months, I was just an, I was an actual different person. Yeah. And that was my sort of, that was when, that was the first time, as someone with ADHD who never really believed in themselves, the first time where I had actually, from like a, an outer person, had sort of come in and taken me mm. and been like, get out of this dark place. And within like six to eight months, I was just a much happier person. And I sort of understood where I don't really want to, yeah. how I don't want to feel, which, you know, I, I look back now and I'm sort of like, wow, because I, I could have gone down a completely different path. And it, sure. I could have gone down so many paths in life and somehow I've navigated myself into semi-decent paths. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's where, you know, that's where Can of Water started really because, you know, you know, I, I had this events company at 19. It was the most incredible thing ever. I was living like a, you know, living like a king in, in you know, the UK uh, music scene for under 18 events and then overnight the whole thing just went psh, I remember and, uh, it literally and, happened overnight and, uh, overnight yeah. it just disappeared and that was my first experience of failure my first experience of like being like wow I'm, am I ever going to find anything as powerful as that because yeah. I loved music and I think as well it's one of those things like now sitting here right, in our early 30s like, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. ridiculous thing to think your life's over at 19 I know. right but at that time you do yeah. it feels yeah, so yeah. real it's like being yeah. in a relationship you know you you, yeah. you, you come out of the relationship like, oh my god I'm you know, and it's just it's that mentality yeah. of actually let's 
take a, you know, and, and that's why failure is so important because you actually see after failure that there's light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah. when, you've, when, you, when you've found that next thing or, you know, you actually look back and you're like, wow, actually, you know, yeah. what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I'm here. Yeah. I need to breathe. I need to accept that this, embrace the failure. Actually, I read something that David Goggins said. He had had such a hard life. Everything went wrong for him. And I, I had very, very different, but I, I had a lot of illness in my family. Mm. You know, my brother was ill when mm -hmm. high frequency was happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had a lot of mental health in my family and illnesses. And I think something that I loved hearing David Goggins say was just, just, just run towards it, mm. embrace it. Rather than hiding from it and bottling it up, um, embrace it, yeah. run towards it. You'll become a much stronger individual. And, you know, I've been doing that now for a, for a bit and it, it actually really, really, it's turned me into a different, it's, it's given me a different outlook in life and it's turned me into a, a much stronger individual. Well, I think it's, uh, and so many of the people who watch this podcast are, are entrepreneurs, they're founders themselves. And I think it's such an important way of framing that relationship with risk and failure, because ultimately part of being an entrepreneur is accepting failure mm. because no one smacks it out of the park no, every time, yeah. right? You might put it on red once, twice, three times, but eventually, hundred percent, you know, yeah, it's going to go. happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. So, in many ways, having a failure so early, and especially at that time when, you know, you've chosen a trajectory, you haven't gone down the route of traditional or corporate route, whatever it might be, and you start comparing yourselves to others, and you think, "Fuck, if I had been going down that route four For sure. years ago, I might be further ahead." Yeah, but yeah. Once you choose that life, it's about continuing to go through it because no one is success after success. Agreed. I don't know about uh, about you in terms of with Cannon Water, but with Real Sport, we failed so many times. Yeah, yeah, we failed yeah. so many times. For sure. Not overall, but every day, right? So many mistakes. Yeah. And I think that it's just important. It's important yeah. to make those mistakes. It's important to learn. You know, my experience personally has always been... Um, you know, just, just, just get up, carry mm. on and learn from, from the mistake. And I yeah. think that's, you know, that, that is so important. If I look at myself actually from when we first started Can of Water to now, I'm an, like, I'm a completely mm. different person. So how old were you when you guys started Can of Water and what's the story around that? Cool. So uh, I was 22 years old, uh, two best friends. So three of us, um, we went to Thailand and we saw how bad the plastic problem was. Mm. It wasn't something that was part of our agenda. So where we grew up, we never saw any plastic pollution. And I always explain it to people that I was actually probably part of the problem. Um, and- Well, at that time, no one knew, right? Exactly, like it just, it exactly, yeah. uh, definitely. And I think that, you know, it was sort of like, how can we be part of the solution now? And we came back and I think 99% of people, and I think this is where risk comes into, into it. Um, because I think 99% of people would come back they go back to their jobs. They might have like a hint of like, oh, let's, let's maybe do this, or let's maybe do that. And then someone will just, in the group, will just turn around and be like, nah, it's just a stupid idea. And that's where a lot of ideas just get terminated mm. there. Whereas I think we were sort of like, no, 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 let's actually look into this. Let's actually give it a go. And we all had full-time jobs. We'd all meet up together, uh, you know, after work. And it was sort of like, it was this, we all had sort of normal, boring jobs and it was this, this was the excitement it was sort of like I'd go to work in the morning and halfway through like at three o'clock but you know what it's like it's like mm. you have that that energy dip I was thinking like I'm going to meet the guys later and we're going to yeah. you know we're doing this and I think that it really got me excited and my ADHD mind mm. was like yeah I need to do this I need to do this like and I think of ideas and I'm a very creative person. I've always been creative. So music and art have always been, you know, my, my thing. And um, I've always sort of wanted to think differently. And I love like challenging my mind. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's something that with Can of Water that we all, we all did. Yeah. You know, it was like most people I speak to, they've just, they, they can only sort of, they only want to reach a certain potential within their mind. It's yeah. not that they. It's not that they can't get there. What's well, the growth mindset? Every, versus the fixed exactly, mindset. Yeah. Everyone's capable of doing Everyone's it. Everyone's capable of it's doing a choice. it. And you know, we'll go into you know a campaign that we're we're working on next year about unlocking potential. Yeah. But you know, we we all unlocked our own potential that we didn't know that we had. So we did serious amounts of research into different packaging and saw that aluminium is actually the most recyclable material on the planet. Mm -hmm. So seven, nearly 75% of all aluminium that is produced ever 
um, is just still in circulation. Wow. So it just had this incredible yeah. message. And um, I think, you know, there were so many hurdles with the water taste weird. Uh, you can't see the you can't see the uh, the water like you can in a in a bottle. Are people going to think it's an energy drink or a beer? Um, you can't reseal a can. Mm. All of these things that most people are like, oh yeah yeah we can't do it we can't do yeah. it because of that. We basically just was like, who cares? Like, yeah. we, we, let's do it. Let's be the first people in the world to do it. Um, if it fails, it fails. But I had already experienced failure and embraced it. Um, so you know, listen, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill worst me. Worst case, and you know you're where you are right now. Exactly. If anything, it'll just make me stronger. And you'll learn a lot. I'll learn a lot. And also, like, I was sort of at that age. You know that, like, 20, 21 to 23, you know, it's just sort of like these moments where it's like, screw it. We're mm. just, we're just going to do it. Um, a, a word that's brought up the whole time is naive. Like, we were so naive. Mm -hmm. If we were in the food and drink world, we never would have created a can of water. Yeah. Because we created a product that was so different to what people were used to. You know, we created like a black and white can that was so minimalistic. It wasn't screamy in your face. You know, it was very sort of, it was mixing fashion and uh, culture in with the brand. And um, it was very ahead of its time in that way because now I think in terms of where you see a lot of branding, it's, the it's all gone super minimalistic. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. all gone that way. But also actually really ahead of its time in terms of how important the message was. Because I, I remember when you guys first started it, actually it was much more brand led than it yeah, was yeah, purpose led yeah. <laughs> because sure. the world wasn't there yet. Yeah, and it honestly, Roy, it, like my darkest days within Canna Water were those days mm. because they were the days where, and I share about it quite a lot. I, uh, you know, the three of us would would make so many cold calls, literally just calling up everyone. Oh, we've got this product. We've got this product. We've got this product, and no one cared. You know, like it's like you've been building this. Like we we couldn't put water in a can because um, we couldn't get any prototypes because no one had done it before. Right. So we needed to basically, in order to fill cans, you need to order a minimum of one hundred and fifty thousand really? units each, <laughs> still and sparkling, which probably would have cost about sixty ground so right. we didn't have that okay uh, so we basically produced we, we got our manufacturer to send us 500 silver cans okay that had the resealable lid on okay and it didn't even have water in it it had like this sparkling lemongrass drink <laughs> in it and uh, we'd meet up after work and we'd create this conveyor belt where one of us would mask the can with masking tape. The other one would spray the can. No way. And then the, other, then the last one would wrap it with like a vinyl. <laughs> and we would turn up to meetings, just this is our can of water. And people thought that we were mental. Yeah. You know, why would anyone want to drink out of a can? And we're talking to them about how, you know, aluminium is better. And they're just like, no, it's all rubbish. Mm. And we'd sit down with industry leaders and we'd get an introduction from, from a friend through a friend through a friend through a friend, you know. And they would just, they would just laugh, honestly. Yeah. And I think it was really dark because it was sort of like, are we building something that no one else really believes in? Mm. Like, is, is it us three idiots? Are we the only idiots in the mm. world that believe that this is going to be a thing? And, um, you know, there were some nights where genuinely I would leave the office and just sit in my car and cry mm. because it was sort of like, am I flogging a dead horse here? And is everyone else, does everyone else see something that we don't? And all of my friends are earning decent money and we're earning nothing. We're just building a passion project. And that was, that was the case, honestly, for about three years. Yeah. I was going to ask, so what, what changed? Was it the appreciation around renewables? Was it, was it that that really changed it for you guys? Or? No, I mean, there was definitely one, there was definitely one obvious change, um, which was, and you talk about risk because there's always risk with these businesses. You, you could be in a business for 10 years and then, There's you know, always risk. There's if there's always, anything that I know, the always, riskiest thing you risk. can ever do. Let's do this. Is that exactly. <laughs> and in, uh, in 2018, um, we brought in an MD who basically just turned around and said, guys, the business is, is, is failing. You know, you've got a little brand going and, you know, we had some industry people who liked it and were asking for cans and I'd send out thousands of messages to influencers and I get three messages back being like, oh yeah, we'll, uh, 
but we didn't we weren't selling anything we were mm. in selfridges we were in whole foods it was ticking along because I, I remember sorry to cut you off yeah. that i remember like very very early on it felt like you guys had some awesome spots but obviously it wasn't like mass yeah and you know what as any young founder like you get these things you're like wow yeah but when you put it into perspective it's not really making any money yeah and it's slow and you're burning a lot yeah. of people don't talk about the burn you know we've, we've got to produce cans we've got to store cans you know we've got to send out out cans it, it, all of these things are, are, are factored in and mm. especially at that stage you don't have the scale for exactly. significant margins 100% and when you so, when you've yeah. got to buy 150,000 of each you know you've always got a, yeah. have a cash flow there and we just we weren't getting anywhere really but we were we were planting something we were yeah. planting a seed and in 2018 um, our md basically turned around and said guys we've got 3 months and in, at the end of the 3 months um if it doesn't work out, we're going back to our day jobs, but let's work our absolute arses yeah. off. Yeah. And, it's a big um, message to deliver. Exactly. Big Let, message. Listen, listen, listen. He, he, knew, he knew, you know, he was like, you know, we've got to work our asses off. The money runs out in three months. And if, if we work our absolute asses off for the next three months, at least we knew for the rest of our lives that we gave it our 100%. We gave it our all. And um, I'll never forget, it was the last month. And... Um, one evening I was I was literally just chilling and I got like 50 messages and it was like have you seen BBC do you, have you seen BBC have you seen BBC I was like oh, what's going on what's going on David Attenborough he's doing something around plastic pollution and David Attenborough basically did Blue Planet yeah and there was an episode where a whale had died and its kid basically was crying mm. it was the, the whale had died about plastic it was all about plastic pollution the whale had died from plastic pollution and i think that loads of people had seen videos of, of this but this was really harrowing like it was really sad yeah. and um honestly that changed everything because I, I feel like i remember this yeah, video it, changed. it went super viral viral right? yeah. it went mad coupled with a video of a turtle with a straw yes. up its nose yeah. like all of these things just went mental yeah and um i'll never forget that week we went from being the biggest fad in the whole of the UK yeah. to being like the biggest necessity when it came to, to any, whether it was retail, schools, universities, businesses, every, everything, everything, you name it. We, it was just, it was on another level. And what I, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen that video or the picture of the guy that's hammering, he's hammering away and he's so far from finding the gold, mm, okay? Yeah, 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 and then yeah. it, so it shows this other yes. image of him walking away from it. Mm -hmm. But he's so close to mm -hmm. it. And, you know, I used to sort of have this conversation with, with Ariel, my other colleague, and we used to be like, we used to say to each other, like, we're on the cusp, we're on mm -hmm. the cusp. But when's the cusp? Mm. You know, are we still on the cusp? The cusp, I don't know. Well, this is the thing. I mean, Steve Jobs said, I think the biggest difference between entrepreneurs who make it and those who don't, it was literally like 50% of it. It's all, it's all perseverance. And I think that that was, you know, that was the first hurdle. Mm. So that was the first hurdle, which is basically like that month, we literally got calls from everyone yeah. and what happened was is that we called up these people and they thought that we were crazy put down the phone we got depressed we thought oh well, is this ever going to happen and we could have walked away but actually what happened after that david attenborough thing is that these people went on the same journey as us so they saw the david attenborough thing yeah. they then wanted to remove plastic they went then went on to google and searched the best alternative to plastic they went on the same journey of looking at all the different packaging found that aluminium was the best then realized that these three idiots called them six months before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what I mean? That's a nice call to pick exactly. back up, Exactly, right? and it was like, hi, this is yeah. blood. And, and it was like, from there, it was sort yeah. of like, okay, cool. This is actually turning into a thing now. This is working. Yeah. And that was, um, you talk about the highs and the lows, you know, that was a really big high after like a three year low, you know? Yeah. And um, it's, it's really, really not healthy to chase the highs. Yeah. Do, do yeah, you know what I mean? Course. It's not healthy because you're always chasing the highs. It's sort of like chase, like for me, I just sort of, I chase the neutral. Like I don't actually, even today, I try not to get so, I embrace it, but I try not to get so excited about things. You can't because the next game's just around the corner, right? Exactly. If it's a big win, the next one might be yeah, a huge yeah, yeah. loss. And if you if you take those lows in the same way you take the highs, 100%. unsustainable. And as a founder, and I think that it, it, 
when it's your baby, it's personal. Yeah. It's actually personal. And in the early days, I think that I've, I've removed myself a little bit from it, um, from the personal side of things. But in the early days, it's personal. Yeah, you know? sure. And when something happens, it's like, but this is my, you know, this yeah. is my baby. And, you know, we, and I think that that's, um, that's something that, that, that is tough. Mm. And it's actually very hard to remove that personal touch it from is, it. It is, But you get to a point where, you know, you grow something that is actually, it's, it, listen, it's always been more than the three of us. It actually has been more than the three of us. It's always actually been bigger than the three of us. We just happen to be the people that, that started yeah. it. But now, you know, it's sort of, it's turned into this thing that, you know, our vision from day one has always been to remove a billion plastic bottles out of the environment right. mm -hmm. within 10 years mm -hmm. and to inspire other brands to put water in a can, mm -hmm. which, you know, as, on a personal side, like who wants to see another brand do what you do? But actually, we know that we're not going to grow a whole category and take over the whole water, of course, yeah. it, you know, just by ourselves. Yeah. It's impossible. So we actually embrace other brands yeah. doing it. So know? now when you see brands like Liquid Death coming through, yeah. obviously just for sure gone mega but it's you know it's it, all part um, of it's, mission, it's healthy right? and i think this is why when you're purpose driven seeing that isn't a knock it's no. a no, one no, no. if your main goal is to achieve this change 100 percent. great yeah. to see I, I think it's honestly i think that what they're doing is fantastic mm. i think that we could sit so nicely alongside them as a brand i think what yeah. they're doing because it feels very different yeah it is but the creativity i'm not taking a liquid death into a business meeting say again i'm not taking a liquid <laughs> death into a business meeting i'll take a can of water fair <laughs> enough <laughs> not gonna say anything but you know what they're doing for you know for the category yeah. is enormous yeah and i think that they're raising serious awareness and, and serious money as well which is a good thing for is, you guys it is, it is it, and it's you know it's 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 healthy yeah i think that what i've learned is greet there's a lot of greenwashing there's a lot of people protecting their profits and their margins mm. you know putting i get that people need to make profit yep. they're a business but maybe think about putting purpose up there yeah, yeah? you yeah, know yeah. i think that's that's the thing is that cannon water was started by three guys that we didn't start this for monetary gain mm. we actually were three guys that were quite lost in life that were, were th that thought wow this could actually you know th this could make a difference yeah and i think that where people resonate with our story is that we're not we were never environmentalists standing outside of coca-cola's office of placards saying screw plastic you know we are we're just three normal guys who just wanted to do you know who wanted to make a difference mm. and who saw something that you know anyone could anyone could could do yeah. it anyone could put water in a can but you know it's about doing it in a way that 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 that, that can essentially you can go against the plastic bottles the god guys with i think that's the tough mm. thing mm. that's the tough bit is that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and i think that it needed a brand like can of water that had that founder led approach that was that had that cultural element in it that really reached out to that sort of that 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 gen z culture mm. where they just turning around and they're just like we don't necessarily want to drink out of a plastic bottle anymore so so this brings me on to something i've been thinking about a lot especially leading up to this conversation how far away are we as a society from from seeing this change and i think it's so important as consumers we make difficult decisions especially with cost of living crisis difficult decisions that uh, may have a financial impact but have such a huge societal impact, impact. Yeah. but when we see other nations for example polluting in the way that they do like has that have those challenges driven you guys on? I mean, have you ever felt like, yes, this is part of the problem, but there's so much more that we can do? Do you ever have that feeling of like existential, like we're doing such, so much amazing work with what we're doing, but we need the rest of the world to, to pick up? Like COP27, COP out. Right, that, on that's it. what don't it even, is, right? Don't even so get how, me started. How do you guys yeah, feel yeah. about that and, and, and progressing this journey even further? I think there's a lot of talk and there's not a lot of doing, in all honesty, you know? Listen, Cano water isn't going to save the world, but it is raising awareness. You know, Coke and Pepsi in America have gone into cans mm. in, uh, in, in two of their products, water, Dasani and Aquafina. That would never have happened without Cano water have started. So it's, it's not, it's about 
doing. That's the thing. It's about actually doing, not talking. So uh, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not a big believer of people just writing marketing things and sort of being like, well, we're doing, you know, we're doing this, we're doing that, because that's just words. Yep. I think that doing is, is very important. Uh, you know, if you look at veganism, it's something that just started probably with like a few people and then it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. And I think that, you know, we're, you're in a place, we're in a place now where people have had to make change, mm. had to. Every menu caters for a vegan now, yep. which is similar to what will happen with, uh, with, with, with this, with plastic pollution, because it's not getting any better. It's only getting worse. We, we just can't see it a lot of the time. And I think that it takes for people to go to somewhere where there is serious amounts of plastic pollution yeah. to see it. Yeah. Um, I just think that there is so much greenwashing out there mm. that it is causing serious, serious um, issues with, you know, where people are actually telling the truth. Yeah, totally. And I mean, for me, as someone who tries to be as conscious of these things as possible, mm. I get so frustrated when I see heavily polluting companies buying carbon offsets. And it's yeah. like, that's job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Without you're enough. just buying your way, you know, you're yeah. buying your way in. And I think that that's, that's the difficulty. You know, don't get me wrong. Aluminium is a resource. You know, mm. it's a, um, you know, it's mined. Okay. Mm. It isn't, you, you could argue that tap water as an example, is, you know, more of a sustainable mm -hmm. alternative. But then when you look into tap water, it's got microplastics in. Yeah, it yeah, also, yeah. some tap water isn't healthy to drink. Yes. There is no perfect solution out there, okay? You could even look at your reusable. It gets really dirty after mm. a while, even if you wash it, mm. okay? The ba bacteria can get caught in it. It's really, really mm. bad. You could also look at, you know, if, if every single person was, was drinking from that, you know, the energy that goes into making, you know, that... No, nothing's perfect, but what yeah. I do believe is that small steps, okay, to whatever it is in the future and raising awareness mm. is massively important. Mm. And I think that that's where the change is going to be, is that this might not be the final result. No, but no someone somewhere will hopefully see this yeah. and come up with the next yeah. biggest and thing. And we might be a part of that. And it's, and it's, you know, genuinely making it much, much easier for consumers to make 100%. those choices. One other question I have before I've got, I've got a few other questions Go I'll ahead. jump into is, and you know, this is something which maybe the conspiracy theorist in me comes out in, but the way that water is subsidized for big corporates, to me, just doesn't seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. How can McDonald's produce a 69p hamburger or a 99p cheeseburger with the amount of water that is required to, to rear cattle, to do these mm. things. We talk about fast fashion, pretty little things selling dresses for 99p, yeah, yeah. and we know how much water goes into that supply course, chain. Course. Something's gonna break here. Like water is not uh, an infinite resource, mm. yeah. as you know. Yeah. How do you view like pricing water right now? How, how, how are companies able to get away with pricing water in that way when it's something which in the next 10, 20 years is gonna be a, a critical and potentially catastrophic yeah. uh, event for lots of developing nations. I just think a lot of it, as, as, as I said before, a lot of it is, is, is sort of smoke and mirrors. Yeah. You know? It's literally just, it's marketing. Mm. That's the reality. And don't get me wrong, you know, we, we're a brand, we're a business. Um, we, th th there's marketing elements, but it's about being transparent. I don't think a lot of these fast fashion brands at all are being transparent. Yeah. I think they're tapping into a culture that don't want to spend a lot of money. You know, we're going into a recession. A lot of people need to, you know, don't want to spend yeah. 60, 70 pounds on a, on yeah. a hoodie or a, or a, or a t-shirt. So, tough. you know, they are very much tapping into a generation where it's sort of like, if I can wear something that looks good for a fiver, but they don't, you know, I, I, I actually think that brands like that, fast fashion brands really similar to the, um, have you, so yeah, similar to like the cigarette packs, mm. maybe they should have on their labels about what goes into it. Guarantee less people are wearing them, they've got big labels <laughs> yeah, stuck on the exactly. back of it, do you know what I mean? But you know, that is the real, <laughs> I think that what will happen is something could possibly happen in the next five to 10 years where it's sort of like a, a climate change catastrophic yeah. thing. I don't know. It's gonna happen. Maybe it won't happen right. in a lifetime, but maybe but it could happen. And I think that, are we gonna realize when it's too late? 
Right. You know, are we going to realize when it's too late? I mean, one of the things that, that terrifies me genuinely, now I don't have kids, I'm not sure if I'm going to have kids, mm. and um, particularly when I read news like this, it definitely yeah. puts me off, but I think we've now missed the deadline mm. for reducing carbon within our environment. I know this is very different to water, but yeah. reducing carbon within our environment yeah. to stop the world heating to a certain point by 2150. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't intend to live I that mean, long. I'll... I doubt I will. <laughs> you never know. With, you never with know. my early lifestyle, I will not be living that long. But still, you know, it's... There is so much underreporting, so much smoke and mirror stuff. Yeah, and I think, you know, something that we've, uh, you know, a stat that we've always seen is there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish by 2050. Wow, I mean, it's, ter- it's terrifying. Know, that's what we're doing. That's where we concentrate. We concentrate on the recyclability and, 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 and you know, we, we, you know, the ocean is an enormous part of the universe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And totally. we, you know, some of the videos that I've seen are, are so scary about how much plastic is in the ocean and we've got to do something about that. And that, you know, that, 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 that's our, you know, when it, when it comes to can of water, you know, that is our, our main objective mm. is how do we stop that? And I think that then when it comes to, you know, when it comes to other things, that's where, you know, other businesses yeah. and brands, um, have to have to have to concentrate on and i think that as i said to you nobody is perfect yeah but as long as people are doing and mm. people aren't just like like you know cop out yeah copping out you know our, our our slogan is don't bottle it yeah and from you know day one it's always been about not putting water into plastic yeah. but you know don't bottle it now is about championing people who haven't bottled it yeah and helping people um you know see their full potential and unlocking their potential because i think a lot of people are out there they could be the next they could be the person that you know that does the next thing absolutely but they just don't know it yeah absolutely and they they look around and they see all this Mm. uh greenwashing and marketing gump and they're probably thinking to themselves like oh i can't but actually you never know yeah you could just you could be that that next that next person yeah and i think it's a really important message to have out there because when you do have like we were talking about carbon credits before where you've got the outcome of cop 27 basically a fund which is admitting yeah we're going to keep on doing this so we're going to pay you off yeah so that we can keep on polluting your water yeah. and keep on doing these things things need to change but josh i've got a few questions that i ask every single guest go on so i'd like to ask you what is the single biggest risk you've taken and what was the outcome the single biggest biggest risk I mean, I guess starting can of water, really, because I knew that it was going to be like a 10 year journey. And if it, if, it, if it had gone wrong, then it's and it's still a risk, then I would have, you know, I would have wasted 10 years of my life. I think that the can of water is definitely my biggest risk. Mm-hmm. And the outcome so far has been only positive in the like now after six coming up to seven years. Wow. You know, it's only been positive. It's it's. Um, it's scary every day it's scary but like walking into a i was actually in my office recently there's 12 of us in the office and uh, i was just like smiling at the team they were having a meeting and someone asked like why like why are you what what like why are you looking at us and smiling it's just we started this business with three of us and the fact that we've got 12 people that are in that office that are, that are, that have the same belief as us the same passion that we wouldn't be where we are today without these people. You know, it's really, really important to big them up as well because they, I guess they emit the risk a little bit because they are, you know, they're, they're on the journey, they're on the journey yeah. with us, you know, and it's probably as risky for them as it, as it is for us. Totally. You know, totally. and I think that it's, um, it's genuinely incredible to sort of, to, to, to see that and to, to see that, there, that there's um, other people out there that are actually, working you know working alongside us that sort of don't believe that we're crazy type of thing. it's always nice know, that's always is. nice reassurance <laughs> <laughs> okay what's the single thing you're you're most proud of um single thing i'm most proud of do you know what i could turn around and say that it's like Ed Sheeran holding a can, or Bill Gates holding a can, or Drake holding a can. Those are pretty good. Because they Those are, are pretty good. It, they're incredible <laughs> things. But genuinely, seeing someone like 
driving down London or walking around where I grew up or wherever and seeing people holding a can of water without us like you know doing any sort of form of marketing is like the strangest and most rewarding feeling ever nothing can beat it and I genuinely believe that um I don't think that can ever that will ever change yeah I think that even even if I'm not part of the business, let's just say can of water goes on for 30 years, 40 years beyond. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever not feel proud that I was part of the, and it, you know, and the reason that is, is actually because of the blood, sweat and tears that have gone into the brand. You know, to actually see someone choose can of water is like, yeah. it's, it's a feeling that no one will ever understand until they sort of, they have that moment. Yeah, no, I, I get it. When I when I see someone sharing a real sport article now, yeah, exactly. even though I'm I've not been involved in that business yeah, yeah, for years, yeah. and they've done but so you well with it. They've got exactly, million, ten million, thirteen million now monthly users, and just like even yeah. when I see it now, yeah, although yeah. I literally have nothing Course. to do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's that. It's that. It's, it's you're part you said of before. it. It's it's like um, it's your own. It's your baby. Yeah, and also the business has got your DNA, whether yeah. whether you like it, whether they like it, or whoever has it likes it or not. Yeah. It's your DNA. Absolutely. That's why, you know, that's why they, you know, people buy into founders, people yeah. buy into personalities. And, you know, that's, that's, and it, it's, it's a very important thing when it comes to, you know, um, when, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's your personality that, that, that really. A hundred percent. They bought. hundred percent. Okay. So on the flip side, one thing you wish you'd done differently, and this is life, career, kind of water. Anything. One thing, because I'm, I'm a man of no regrets. Um, well, I'm going to have to press you for one. Okay. <laughs> I wish that I'd asked for help more. I really, really wish that I'd asked for help more. I have so many founders that come to me now and they, you know, they ask me like, you know, can you come and meet me? Can you do this? And I always say yes. Always. I don't think I can ever say no. Mm. I mean, I'm sure it'll get to a point where it's sort of like, I can't handle it, but I, I love helping people in all aspects of life, business, personal, everything. I love helping people. It's a passion of mine. Anyone that comes to me and asks for help, I help them. doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And, and I, I think that knowing you personally, I know that's true yeah. as well. I know you're not just 100%, saying that. And if, I know if, you've if, helped if, a lot of people out. For sure. And, and if, yeah. you know, if it, if it, if it um, and I think that it's, um, it's about being sincere, <laughs> doing things not to gain anything, but actually just, you know, if, if anything, I gain, per, you know, I actually gain, I learn more about me and about mm. others. Um, but I wish that when Can of Water started, or even before with High Frequency, I wish that I had the, uh, I wish, I, I, I think that just there was something inside of me that, that, that was sort of like, that never believed in myself. Mm. Why would anyone want to help me? Mm. So it wasn't even an ego thing. It's never been an ego thing for me. It's always been a, why would someone want to help me? It's like an embarrassment mm. to ask for help. And I actually think that, I, I think, would it, maybe not can of water because, you know, we brought in our MD and we learned a lot from our investors. And, but I think in life, I think that I, I wish that I had just gone to more people and asked for help. And I think that I'm happy, I'm actually happy today where I am, but I've got there through making a load of mistakes and learning from them. So it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword actually, because I do wish I asked for help, but I learned from my mistakes. So I got yeah. to where, so I think I would have got to where I got to and I still would be here. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Answer. And to be honest, that's, that's pretty much the conclusion we always come to, which is, there are things we wish we did differently, but ultimately the path we took is the path that led us here. 100%. So as long as you're happy in the, the here and now. Exactly. As you exactly. said, it's easy to live without regrets, but that's super sure. interesting. Okay, what does it take to be successful? Naivety, perseverance, don't bottle it. Um, and just really just believe in yourself. Yeah. Don't let any, you know, the amount of times that people turned around and said, um, you know, I don't think you'll be able to do this. I don't, it's, it's, it's just, you, either you don't have it in you, are you really going on this journey? It's a bit of a stupid idea. You know, it just takes that drive and that vision and, you know, like, you have to, you have to just, a lot of people care about what people think and, you know, I do, everyone does, but it's about, you know, having that sort of blocking out, blocking out Get the, the blinkers on, <laughs> Get absolutely. The blinkers on. Yeah. And basically, if you believe in it, 
as we've said, if you fail, you just get back up and you learn from that. So, but if you don't give it your all, or if you don't even give it the opportunity, that could have been your ticket. That's when you live with regrets. When you don't go for it. Exactly. 100%. And I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, you know, there were times, I don't know if you remember this, when we were doing real sport, where we tried to launch real pets. Yeah, we tried to launch yeah, real yeah. food, you know, and, and a lot of people are scared to be yeah, seen yeah, at the bottom of the journey, at the start of the journey. Yeah. But if you don't give it that all, if you don't go all in, like that's when you No, I think, it's, I think it's really important. Like there were so many times as well as a DJ where I would DJ parties, private parties or clubs where I would see people that had really good jobs yeah. and I would hide from them because I'd be so embarrassed. Like I'm a DJ and they're like, they've got this big job and I just would get really bad anxiety. I wouldn't mm. want them to see me. And, um, after a while, I actually started to embrace it. 100%. I was like, I'm here. And people say to me the whole time, like, because I still DJ. People are like, but you've got can of water. Like, why are you still DJing? Because can of water, because, like, DJing actually helps my, my mind, actually. Yeah, it I was keeps lucky me, enough yeah, to get know, a performance in Miami. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It keeps, you know, it keeps me, it keeps me young. It keeps me energetic. It, 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 it's like, it's my passion as well. Yeah. Music, as I said, is my passion. I love playing music. I love DJing. So I just think it's about, you said yeah. it before, Roy, balance. It's yeah. about the balance. And I yeah. think that, you know, that's the key to happiness is, is actually like having that balance in life. And, and I think embracing it is so important. After I saw Real Sport, I was doing stand-up. I did stand-up. Love that. Yeah, 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 I remember. I remember. And yeah, yeah. bombed in rooms with yeah, 40 yeah. people. And you would talk about yeah, yeah. bringing some humility back. For sure. Selling yeah, a company. Yeah, yeah. That'll do it. But it's same with starting this podcast. Yeah, yeah. You don't start off with hundreds for of sure. thousands of views. Yeah, yeah. It's a slow Completely. build. Up. It's embracing that and yeah. not being afraid to and see it's that. for you. It's yeah. all for you. 100%. All right, Josh, my last question for you is 14-year-old Josh walks in right now. Yeah. What are you telling him? Um, I don't think he would believe, I <laughs> genuinely, I don't think he'd believe like where he is now, in all honesty. You know, at the ages of sort of 12 to sort of 16 were my darkest years in life where, you know, my ADHD, my, my addiction, everything was really, you know, really tough. I looked at myself and didn't understand what it was sort of like, it was like a why, why me? I didn't mm. understand why me. So I think that if that 14 year old kid came in now and saw, you know, where I am, I think that they would be like, it, it would give them extreme comfort, but it would probably be a very emotional mm. roller coaster for them because I think there'd be a lot of like doubt of like, really? I don't think they'd believe it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So what would you tell them? Just stop worrying. You know, I spent, I spent years, um, I spent years at seeing therapists and talking about, you know, and asking why I felt like this and like, will I ever be, you know, will I ever, I, I could never be like that or I could never, you know, why would anyone want to give me that or this or that? And I think that, you know, the amount of sleepless nights mm. that I would have, like I would go to school on like, honestly, an hour's sleep because I'd be up all night worrying about my future. Yeah. And I would say to myself, like, you just don't have to, you don't have to worry. Just stop worrying. Just, there's, there's, just live and let whatever is going to be, be. And as long as you believe in yourself and as long as you navigate your path, um, within your mind, like I, I genuinely just from believing in my own self and my mind now, I've actually, that, that person that I thought I was, I wasn't. I'm actually a lot better than what I thought I was at 14. I actually had it in me the whole time, but it was about like unlocking that potential and seeing it. And over the, over the years of through making mistakes, the, the, the path that I, the bad path that I could have gone mm. down, you know, I didn't. Amazing. Josh, thank you so much thank for coming on. Really appreciate it.